Boys and girls, girls and boys, super intelligent shades of the color sky blue pink and also small yellow teddy bears that you can't see because of his camouflage training. Um, welcome. Welcome to the show. Cross-pollination now. Um, basically, Carnivore JT is a friend of Ted's on uh, on the platform formerly known as, as Twitter, now known as Ted, I don't know. It's called X, isn't it, or something like that. Um, and over there, the name of the game is poking shit at people who want to say stupid shit. Basically, um, introduce yourself, uh, Carnivore JT. Tell us all about it. Um, where do they find you on social media and all of that? Yeah, Carnivore JT uh, on Twitter. It's Carnivore underscore JT. Uh, I have a website, theinnercarnivore.com. Uh, host a podcast, have a cookbook. Uh, and yeah, that's basically how I got going on, on Twitter was poking shit at people. And mostly it was vegans. That's what it started with. Um, it is now elevated up to uh, fitness influencers is, is the main target that I like to poke at. Uh, yeah, all the, all the platforms. Um, there's platforms that I don't like. I don't like TikTok. I don't like Facebook, but I'm on there and it's super easy to repurpose videos so if that is the platform of choice you can find me there as well okie dokie and uh is there a youtube presence at all did we mention that yep. or is it there? yeah cool yep carnivore gt there you go there it is awesome so folks should obviously go and subscribe immediately to all of that stuff because that's what we're about here cross-pollination it helps al gore with his rhythms you see when people go and sub on mass to someone's channel then al gore thinks that it's worth poking that channel's material out to a wider test audience and that's how we grow so get that done that'll be awesome um let's go back tell us your story where were you at the beginning of your journey to your current belief on um on nutrition and 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 all of those kind of aspects of lifestyle training as well all of that kind of stuff give us the full rundown basically yeah yeah no, I, no absolutely it's it's kind of funny because I don't, I don't talk about my um, past experiences and education very much uh, because I like people just to assume, um, which they often do based on my name. Uh, so actually, my my experiences in athletics and sports medicine. Uh, I was I played college baseball. Um, I got my undergrad degree in sports medicine, so my bachelor's is in sports medicine. Uh, post bachelor's, I was a division one baseball coach, worked with division one, um, strength and conditioning as well. Uh, got my master's in science and then kind of tried to keep going the, the baseball route, but it was a, a tough road to make. So I kind of veered off into sales a little bit, ended back up in personal training, um, which is where it's really fun for me because I have years of experience as not only a personal trainer, but as someone who hired and trained personal trainers. So I've, I've heard every, every spiel that everybody gives on their philosophy or why my program works. Like I've literally like you're reciting out of personal training 101 for dummies, like just nonstop. I've heard that forever. Uh, got out of that, got into more sales, settled down, had a family, um, had, had little kids, got a dad bod, was like, man, I got to get out of this. Um, I was an amateur bodybuilder um, competitor in my 20s. So I spent pretty much my entire 20s in, in really good shape. Uh, bounced around a couple old diets that I'd done in the past, realized I wasn't feeling good. Stumbled on Paul Saladino first, uh, went animal-based for a little while, and then gradually just morphed into carnivore. And honestly, I'm carnivore because I feel better. Uh, I'm probably the most lenient carnivore out there as far as what people eat. But for me, I just feel better without carbs. Uh, so it morphed into that. Um, it morphed from me starting a social media presence just to like get the word out to realizing that there's a lot of people with a lot of influence saying a lot of stupid stuff out there. And it turned into what you just said, poking around at people. And here I am. Excellent. Yes, it's it's always good fun seeing someone who clearly has an intellect and some knowledge behind him who is just sitting there and just 
doing doing that. Ted likes to do the same thing, of course, and and uh, the folks that follow JT and also that follow HRH underscore Ted on um, the platform formerly known as Twitter. Uh, we'll see that kind of thing going on in there. It's always always good fun. Who are some of your favourite um, promulgators of disinformation, lies, bad stuff? Who are the naughty people? Oh man, there's a lot, unfortunately. Oh yes. Oh, uh, yeah. So I honestly, I try and it, it, I always end up with the people who like to call people. Um, unkind names on social media uh the most recent one that kind of blew up uh was a guy who out of the uk that just flat out called somebody wrong and then posted one of the most biased studies i've ever seen in my entire life um there's there's a couple fitness accounts out there who like to use the uh, c-u-n-t word um i will swear a lot but i will not use that one my wife does not appreciate that fair enough uh, and most of it is centered around this idea that you can lose weight eating whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. right? Like the, the current scheme is I'm going to eat, you know, bags of sugar. Like I'm literally going to eat teaspoons of sugar while eating candy just to prove that I can lose weight, mm -hmm. which is all fun and game because if you have a halfway decent metabolism and you have some decent willpower and you can get past the fact that you feel like shit and you're hungry and you work out enough, I can lose weight doing that too. That, that doesn't prove anything. All it does is tell a whole bunch of unhealthy people that, hey, you don't have to give up your chocolate. Come by my program and we'll figure out how to fix that in there. Mm. And so it's that that's the disingenuous part that I dislike just because I can do something does not mean I should be promoting it for everybody else. And mm. just because I put a caveat on the end of it that says, now I'm not telling you to do this. Like We all know people are not very intelligent and people are still going to do it no matter what disclaimer you put. Mm. So yeah. those are the majority. I don't really have very many people that I like to poke too much because people can get crazy. Um, I just get sent stuff from time to time and then I just roll with it. Mm -hmm. So it's the calories in, calories out brigade at large who are telling you if it fits your macros and calories in, calories out. And it's all about energy though. And all you need to do is count your energy in and your energy out. Um, you know, and then you'll get the results that, that you should get sort of thing. What is wrong with that? Why, how are they wrong? So I've given up trying to argue thermodynamics. Like I, I'll just accept it. Okay, whatever. That's fine. You can have it. Um, what I have taken offense with is, and maybe offense isn't the wrong word, what I've taken aim at is this fact that a calorie is a calorie no matter where it comes from, mm -hmm. um, which I think is the most disingenuous thing to tell somebody. So one of the videos that kind of started this this little bump of mine that I've been getting as far as engagement was I played a few clips of people being very boisterous about a calorie is just a fucking calorie, no matter where the fuck it comes from. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, calories, just a calorie. Uh, I discovered that there are calories in firewood. You put that in a bomb calorimeter and you will absolutely get a caloric measurement out of it. Mm -hmm. So I got an equal amount of calories in firewood with an equal amount of calories in steak. And I proposed that they were the exact same thing because a calorie after all is just a calorie. Correct. And that sparked some, oh, well, that's disingenuous. There's dietary. Well, no, no, there is no dietary calorie. That's not actually a thing. A dietary calorie is just a KCAL, which is a thousand calories. It's just right. put on a nutrition label. Yes. So I think it's very disingenuous to not realize that just because it produces a calorie, that's not what it means. Because then the same people will go into, well, the thermic effect of food. So what you're saying is that it's still not the same. So that, that's the one that I found the easiest um, because people just, that, that's personal training 101, right? Like build a calorie deficit, 3,500 calories for a pound of fat. As long as you are in a 3,500 calorie deficit, you will lose a pound of fat. It's linear. It's easy. It's science. It's math. That's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's been the easiest one because people just, say it and and don't actually know what it is they're mm, talking about mm, right so is there any particular resistance to naming lame norton as the worst promulgator of disinformation on the on the tiktoks or on the the x platform oh so, so i got i uh i got i got lane's attention on one of my videos and uh <laughs> it, it blew me away because here's 
Like, I actually think Lane's a smart guy. He obviously is a smart guy. He's a PhD. But the the way he goes about stuff just blows my mind. So the, the video in question, for anybody who hasn't seen it, is a guy started a video with uh, eat more fiber, don't listen to these carnivore fuckwits. Mm -hmm. I was like, cool. And then he went on to list a, a fiber study that was just absolutely riddled with holes. And literally all I did in the video was read the study verbatim. Literally the only thing I changed is they said it's not wise and I said it's stupid. And Lane Norton commented in and was like, okay, well, find me a study that shows fiber decreases mortality or find me one study that shows fiber doesn't have benefit. A lot of fucking mental gymnastics going on. And I was like... I literally just read the study that this dude posted. Like I yeah. didn't even come up with my own opinion. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's very typical, honestly, I, yeah, very typical response from Lame Norton. To be fair, that's the kind of way that he will couch things to completely inappropriately, as it turns out, claim the intellectual high ground, the moral high ground, and any other form of high ground that he thinks he can possibly claim completely inappropriately. Let's not forget. That while Lamb Norton may be a smart guy with a PhD, not that having a PhD necessarily means you're smart. I could name you a number of PhDs who are nothing of the sort. Um, Lamb Norton is a bloke who cannot correctly state the first law of thermodynamics, let alone apply it correctly. So quite why so many people want to listen to Num Nuts Norton. I've got no ideas. Anyway. There it is. Um, that's Ted doesn't like him either. You might have noticed that Ted's not a fan of Lame, among others. Ted also doesn't like Not Dr. Gregor. What are, what are your thoughts on Not Dr. Gregor? I think Gregor's one of the funniest examples. Uh, the dude wrote a book on how not to age. Mm. And I've, I've actually done a couple side-by-sides of him and, and Carnivore Doctors. Uh, Kiltz is my favorite because Kiltz is like 17 years older than him. And looks in a thousand percent better shape. Mm. Uh, I honestly like part of me thinks Gregor's a bot. Like he never responds to anything on social media. Um, he does his videos. He somebody posts to him. Oftentimes they refer to him in the third person. And he just posts the most ridiculous things like this is why protein might be killing you, or it's gonna age you, or this is why you I mean just the I mean, stuff that he posts year, is just... I read, I read every paper <laughs> published every year, so you don't have to. Number one, no, he doesn't read every paper published every year. That's impossible. And number two, even if he does, I think I'd still like to read it for myself because I've seen Gregor's interpretation of a number of studies, and he's got every single one of them destitutely wrong, completely wrong in terms of what he's saying about what. And uh, I, I guess that leads to that, like we've given an example there, of this whole idea that, if a person wants to give health advice, fitness advice, dietary advice, that kind of thing to others, what do you think? Should they present in a certain way? Is it okay for someone like Gregor to put himself forward and to claim to be an expert in health? What do you think? I, mean, I know I think I'm putting that's you on the spot, but that's the whole point. Oh, no, no, that's, that's totally fine because that's, that's a thing you had to think about when your personal trainers, right? Like any of these people that are, are health and fitness coaches, should you be able to do it yourself in order to tell people? And I, I think there's a fine line. I mean, you can do examples of sports like Andy Reid just won a Super Bowl. That dude doesn't look like he could do anything. Now, mm. in fact, he was at one point a, a professional football player. So yes, um, John Wooden was never a great basketball player one of the greatest coaches of all times. So I think you can. Um, I think it's very difficult though to yeah. tell somebody you should do this, but I can't do it myself. And so I, I think it's, it is tough. Um, I think in Gregor's, in that specific example, the, the sarcopenia one, I think is the funniest one. He, he posted some study about how ketosis can lead to muscle loss and and that was actually one of my my bigger comments. I I absolutely ratioed the shit out of him with like like a thousand likes on it. Like this thing was crazy. Being like, are you really the one that should talk about sarcopenia right now? And like mm. like 
losing muscle on, on keto and you're really, so I think if you're going to have that bold of a stance, like one like that, like, Hey, you're going to lose muscle if you are in a low carb diet, while you also look like you have never touched a weight in your entire life and that you literally would just blow over while there are plenty of people who have muscle and like, that's a situation where you should probably be able to back up what it is physically that you are, are trying to say. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to talk about like LDL and the, the path, like that's maybe another story, but there are definitely certain situations where you have to be able to physically back up your assertion, especially when it's, this is going to happen if you don't do it my way. Yeah. I mean, the one that comes to mind other than the ones we've already mentioned is I saw a post this morning of a woman who is the new director of the American Diabetes Association or something, and she's showing this plate with that, you know, that that, that should be mm-hmm. all these healthy whole grains and vegetables and all of this kind of stuff and limit your protein and stay away from that nasty saturated fat, all the usual absolute gobshittery and nonsense that these turds put forward. That's not really the point, though. The woman is absolutely obese. Patently. It's like, well, hang on a minute. Really? Should we be taking advice here? Uh, nutritional advice from this person? I mean, no, that's, yeah. that's absolutely, if you were going to be in a place, so I, I equate that to, you know, are you going to put somebody as the U.S. Secretary of of treasury, right? Like using a US example, mm. who has a negative net worth and has been bankrupt six times. Mm. Like, is that who you want to lead the treasury? Well, then why Sounds do we like have an that improvement for... on the current probably, but yeah. <laughs> <Right. Who knows? laughs> it's true. Mm. But situations like that, if you are the face of something and you are the one that is, you know, trying to lead the direction, then yes, you absolutely should look the part of where people want to go. Because the first mm. thing I say is why on earth would I listen to anything that you say. Mm. Yeah. So while people should be looking absolutely for veracity, correctness, scientific indication that what is being said here is supportable, it's hard to get away from this. Very, very hard to get away from, from this. I mean, I could study for the next 10 years and become an absolute expert in the female menopause and set myself up as an absolute expert in this and set up my YouTube channel talking about nothing but that. Would that work for me, perhaps, even if I was the most knowledgeable person on that topic? Probably not, because I'm actually not in the demographic that's going to relate to. Anyway, cool. All right. So what else do we need to talk about today? Oh man, so I got I got a good one. I'll uh I'll actually get your your opinion on this. Um I finally got something to go semi-viral on Instagram. And something that I thought should be semi common knowledge. Uh somebody posted a everybody's everybody's favorite, the consensus statement on LDL from the European Atherosclerosis Society. Yeah. It's the gold standard, right? And I I throw Dr. Allo in there every chance I get, like him talking about it. Mm. And for those of you who don't know, it's literally a, a consensus statement that says LDL causes atherosclerosis and you should get LDL down as much as possible and you should use LDL lowering drugs in the process. Yeah. And so somebody posted that in response to a carnivore comment. And so I went, okay, let's take a look. This is a consensus statement. So let's mm. take a look at those who are doing the consensus scene. Because apparently people think it's still a study, and by definition, a consensus statement is an opinion of the mm-hmm. people on that panel. It even says current opinion on the top right-hand corner of the paper above the title, by the way, in big red letters. It says current opinion. Go. Sorry. Carry on, JT. Yeah. No, no, apparently people didn't know that, Like, mm. I, which like blew my mind. So I actually, in a follow-up video, I included the manual on guidelines on how to do a consensus statement. Mm. And so I just went down to the... and I. I'd come across this probably a couple of months ago, um, and I went down to the conflict of interest statement. And, and typically, a conflict of interest statement for people who don't read a lot of studies is rather small. Mm. Like if it is, it's like, hey, this company paid for my room and board, or they paid for a meal, 
or hey, they paid me to come lecture. Mm-hmm. Like that is a typical conflict of interest statement. Yeah. This one is something like 600 words long. I'll tell you what, at this point in the video, why don't we splice it in with the music? We'll do that right now. People can have a look at this yes. statement. Here it comes. <laughs> Incredible. 90 seconds yeah, it, later. <laughs> all, all you have to do is look at the first couple companies and you go, okay, Pfizer's in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you're like, well, who's this company, Amgen? Mm-hmm. Who's AstraZeneca? Who's Merck? And who's Koa? And you start looking at it. And then I was like, okay, well, what do these companies do? I know what Pfizer does. Pfizer has Lipitor. And mm. for people that don't know, until the Lipitor patent ran out, Lipitor was the number one selling drug of all time. Mm. Like it's the most profitable drug in history. And so then I look and AstraZeneca has an LDL lowering drug and Koa has an LDL lowering drug and Merck has Crestor, which is an LDL lowering drug. And then I started piecing them out and just seven companies, I didn't even go through the rest of them because there was some diabetic insulin ma- or pharmaceuticals in there. Mm. I just picked out seven and those seven are listed 143 times. Yeah. And I was like, and it's not just, Hey, you know, we did this. Six of them are on boards. There's 18, uh, consulting gigs in there, research grants. And so I, I brought that up in the video and I was like, okay, should, shouldn't we take a look at this? The fact that this is an opinion piece that is the most quoted gospel. If you ever talk to anybody who says LDL is going to kill you, they are going to cite this paper. Yeah. And there's this big of a conflict of interest, all with companies that behoove them Mm -hmm. to make the statement that you are making. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that actually took off quite a bit. Um, I got Dr. Ids, one of my favorites. Dr. Ids. He's like, oh my gosh, you attacked the funding. I'm like, it's not even the funding. They didn't fund the study. There's no study. It's a bunch of people that got together and picked what studies they were going to include in their meta-analysis and yeah. picked what the endpoints for their graphs were going to be and mm. came to a consensus. So yes, I do think it's very applicable. Uh, so that has spiked the um, the original person that I commented back on. And he is now formulating a very long video with, I'm sure, a ton of LDL studies on why LDL is going to kill me. Mm-hmm. So that would be my question to you is, what is your response when somebody says LDL is going to kill you? Well, first of all, I'd say show me some evidence that that's so. And they will cite that opinion piece, to which I will counter cite the Ravenskopf paper, which systematically dismembers the European Consensus Panel paper, and its title is, Nope, LDL does not cause a comprehensive review, because it turns out that the people who had a bought and paid for opinion cherry-picked the data that they wanted to present and left out the data that wasn't helpful to their cause. At the end of the day, cause and effect scientifically is determined using properly designed, properly powered, 
properly controlled and observed research intervention which is experimental in nature. Association cannot inform on cause and effect, risk, hazard, or any of those associated terms. They are all cause and effect terms. Show me an experiment where a number of human beings split into two cohorts that are genetically identical, i.e. sets of twins, at birth or before, locked in laboratories, kept under control and observation for their entire lives, and allowed to differ only in respect of their exposure to LDL cholesterol, so-called, I'll be interested. Until then, you have an inference based on association. Is the inference any good? It turns out when you look at the power of the statistics provided about this so-called association, the whole thing dissolves because it's piss weak at best. It does not establish any meaningful difference between person A and person B over a 100 year life span, even if the association being reported was causal, which it isn't. So if you want to talk to me about cause and effect, risk, hazard, or any of those kind of things, you bring me the science that supports that claim. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. Because you do not have evidence of cause and effect. What you have is ill discipline in referring to non cause and effect data as cause and effect because that's your opinion, because maybe you were paid millions of dollars by companies that make drugs that lower the thing you're talking about being a problem. Maybe. That's how I respond to that one, basically. Uh, at some more length than that, obviously, and I've done so many, many times in my videos with respect to this particular paper. Um, what I cannot understand is how it is that that paper has not been withdrawn. Other than I would suggest that the same companies are probably paying the people who edit that journal quite a bit of money for some reason. Who knows? So it's, it's just junk science. It's anti-science. It's rubbish on that level alone. That's enough for me, but put that aside. Let me ask you this, JT. Let's say you're a proponent of the lipid hypothesis, LDL, so-called cholesterol, which isn't cholesterol, by the way. Do people know that? I hope they do. So-called LDL cholesterol causes heart disease, you say. Great. Okay. Please tell me, JT, why the following is true. Atherosclerotic lesions develop in set anatomical sites within the vascular tree, predictably so, in people, they do not develop as a um, diverse and universal thing across the entire inside of all the veins and arteries. Why is that? Because do I'll not those, do, do those vessels not carry the exact same blood, all of them? Arteries and veins, yes, they do. It's the same blood with the same LDL so-called cholesterol in it at the same concentration, give or take a small amount. So why is it that these lesions are only developing in set sites? Hmm, whoops. So it can't be the cause, can it? Oh, yes, so these people say, well, maybe it's, maybe it's um, necessary but not sufficient, they say. This is the next bit of mental gymnastics. Okay, if it's not sufficient to cause the disease, I think we're getting there, aren't we? It is therefore not the cause of the disease. Is that difficult to understand? I mean, it's... So when I actually, the first... When I first started looking at it, because I, I never gave two shits about cholesterol until I realized that eating this way, like that's literally all everybody says, cholesterol, 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 mm. cholesterol. Mm. All right, let's look at it. And it was literally the one of the very first papers that I read where I was like, wait a minute, this you don't even actually test for LDL. Mm. You come up with this number based on an equation yes. from the blood that you took, mm. the, the Freen, Walder, whatever, I'm going to butcher the name, but yeah. 
the equation. And I was like, wait a minute. I was like, and then if somebody has high HDL and low triglycerides, that can affect the output of the equation. So we're, we're literally, you are literally telling me I'm going to die. You're telling me I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm mm -hmm. going to die based on this equation that may or may not be accurate because I do in fact have high HDL and low mm. triglycerides. Mm. What? Mm. And we literally base everything off of this. And then yes. all of a sudden it's like, well, saturated fat causes LDL, which means saturated fats and animal fats, which means animal fats are going to kill you mm. because of cause and effect. I'm like, how the fuck did you get there? Like, how did we get from this to this to this? And we just jumped through all these hoops and the basis of saturated fat is going to raise my LDL is done off of your FFQ study. Yeah, like I, I, it's theology. I don't. I it's don't theology. Understand. It's not science, it's theology. It's basically what the issue is there. So that's that's kind of what causes um, uh, people to, to go down that road. Basically, it, it's people who are being indoctrinated by a group of individuals who are nefariously claiming authority in this field and who are very, very confidently putting forward their views as scientifically backed and as a fact when anything but is true to their own ends, whatever those ends may be. It's disgraceful. It's unacceptable. Um, the number of people whose lives have been destroyed and ended before their time because of taking this ridiculous advice, I think, is far, far worse than any Austrian painter ever achieved, for example. You know. And I, um, I honestly think it's they don't want to admit that they don't know. Mm. Like you we're in we're in 2024. And they can't tell me why fiber is good for me. Mm. All they can reference, which this is the funny, this is, this is the one that Lane commented on. And like, this was one of the worst meta-analysis I've, I've ever read. And it was a meta-analysis that stated for every seven grams of fiber that you eat, which is what, like an avocado, your risk of cardiovascular disease goes down by 9%. Mm -hmm. Risk is like, man, that, like, that's really like specific. Like, yeah really specific. Mm. So let's look at it. The very first study is a randomized control trial of smokers in the eighties in Finland. Right. I'm like, I'm not sure how that's applicable, but sure. Okay. Let's take a look. And then I realized all of this is from the eighties, eighties and nineties mm. mailed in FFQs. <laughs> we can't secure our mail-in ballots, but mail-in <laughs> FFQs, those are cool. Mm. Uh, and I'm like, okay, and then the first time I ever realized that all of these studies use FFQs, it's like, well, what is an FFQ and why does everybody use it? And for anybody who's never seen an FFQ, they ask questions like, have you ever had steak in a sandwich? Okay. In the last 12 months, have you had steak in a sandwich? Cool. How many times did you eat it? Awesome. That's red meat. Did you have a casserole with beef in it? How many times in the last 12 months? Cool. That's red meat. Mm. Uh, did you have pizza with meat on it cool mm. that's right that's meat. processed meat oh they don't even they don't even <laughs> distinguish between that sometimes exactly there's one the the colon cancer right the red meat causes colon cancer they make it super easy and tell you exactly what they qualify as red meat mm. and pizza and lasagna are yep. down there at the bottom yeah and i'm like so not only so it Bert, what did you eat 12 months ago oh. how many times did you have a steak sandwich 12 months ago jesus like you don't know. And it's not, not even just 12 months. They send these out every like four years. Yeah. So I want you to recall what you ate over the last four years. And then not only that, I want to tell you the serving size. Mm. So then I can then break it down to within grams, what your risk yeah. changes. That's some good sciencing, isn't it? And that, But that's literally all of them. That's every single study that you see. Yeah. That's a meta-analysis that a food causes. Yeah. And this fiber study is particularly the one what I literally read verbatim. Was they're like, so there's some problems, you know, in measurement errors. So you shouldn't be, it would be wise not to focus on the risk estimate. Mm. Okay, so why are you giving me one then? And then it was things like, you know, there's, there's just with, while we hypothesize, we cannot prove with an observational study 
okay, so why are you telling me that it does? Like, mm -hmm. and I literally just read these things out of the study. I was like, cool, you have a great study here. And that's the one Lane Norton came back with mental gymnastics. And I was like, yeah. buddy, I literally just read verbatim. Like yeah. they, the authors don't even hide it. They're like, yeah. this is garbage. Oh, by the way, you're going to get heart disease if you don't eat. Yeah, fire. but Lane Norton thinks mass is conserved. So, you know, whatever. The boy is an absolute imbecile. He's an imbecile with a PhD is all. Whatever. I, I tell you, just circling back to the to the LDL thing, but the, the one that they get really excited about, these buffets, they go, oh, yes, but the Mendelian randomization absolutely proves it's causal. No. Mendelian randomization is not better than associative work. It's weaker. Here's why. What they do is they take a bunch of people who have a certain bucket any number of, any one of, or any number of certain genetic SNPs in their genome, which are supposedly associated with lower lifetime exposure to LDL. Okay, fine. And they compare those people with a genetically otherwise so-called, well, phenotypically similar group of people, so-called, who don't have those SNPs. Ergo would be expected to express more LDL throughout the lifespan. And then they do an association of exposure to LDLC over the lifespan with heart disease outcomes in these two populations, which absolutely proves their point. Except here's the problem. They didn't test anybody's LDL. Not even once, ever. They estimated what the person's LDL lifetime exposure is based on their genetics. Now, that's fine until you understand that genetics are not a fait accompli. They are a set of instructions which can be up or down regulated such that there is a wide range that can be expressed around a certain thing. That's not science either. That's doing science by a proxy associate. So it's not stronger than associative work. It's weaker. You want to tell me about someone's lifetime exposure to LDLC? I would like to see a continuous area under the curve graph based on a continuous monitoring of that person's LDLC over time. Have you got that? Well, which is also funny because LDL can change massively mm, based exactly. on when it's tested within 24 hours. Nick Norwitz yeah, has like, shown that recently. You can change your I know. LDL massively. So eat some Oreos and you that's drop, it. like, wait, what? Like, yeah. Mm. That that's the other one that to me I'm like okay so it's like it's like blood glucose if you were said okay higher blood glucose is going to kill you yeah right but we're not going to be super specific about when we take this blood glucose mm. so we took fifty thousand people who all ate twenty seventeen Twinkies and then did their glucose an hour after mm -hmm. and those people died mm. so high blood glucose is going to kill you yeah. Now, in that case, yes, high blood glucose is probably going to end up killing you. But it's like, that's the the association. I'm like, like how, like that's so weak. And people literally just read headlines and go, dude, fiber, you eat more fiber, you have less heart disease. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you eat red meat, you have higher heart disease. Obviously. And I'm like, I at this point, I can't, even the studies that are, are pro- carnivore for me i'm like you literally can't i could just argue with studies all day long mm. my personal favorite study absolute favorite it's the one that came out of the university of chicago that said in males if you exercise more than 7.5 hours per week a white male is 81 percent more likely to die than a black male okay it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> all right what like, how, how do you just because you can show that there's a correlation between something does not mean you should post it. Like I saw a study one time that said uh, Coca Cola may raise your testosterone. Mm -hmm. May not too because they because they gave it to some rats and their <laughs> testosterone yeah. went up. <laughs> Come on, this is you you coined it perfectly. Junk science. Like at some point we just got to stop posting things that we find. Yeah. Well, there it is. I mean, for me though, I think one of the things that Ted has been doing recently on his X feed is that he was being offered a whole bunch of posts all the time by those with these with circles around them in their names that want to say stupid things, of course. 
And the whole experience was really quite depressing and um, insulting to Ted's intelligence, frankly, and he'd had enough of it, frankly. So here's what he started doing. He actually started on-site blocking all of these individuals and only leaving the ones open that were actually major influences that Ted could actually argue with meaningfully because you can't have a meaningful argument with nobody. Nobody sees it. Nobody cares. So for those of you who think that the the X platform has become a cesspit, you're right. It is an absolute cesspit. But the way to tidy it up is to actually just block. You don't have to listen to this nonsense from these idiots. Leave the main, I, you know. I actually, my vegan engagement has gone way down on X. And part of it was I had a one of the larger ones, a 50,000 follower uh, account back when I had like three or 4,000 followers was like, you need to block this guy. Just mm -hmm. block him ahead of time mm -hmm. to all of her followers. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, that's You're fine winning. with me. You're winning. Yeah. Like, <laughs> woo yeah. And now I, I get hardly any engagement from twit from vegans, which is totally fine with me because now I'm arguing with every clown out there that says I'm going to die from not eating carbs. That's, mm, that's, that's been my other one. Yeah. The no carb people. Yeah. Uh, that has provided, it's super easy to pick dietitians. I just pick a dietitian that says, you need to eat 10 slices of bread a day. And I'm like, Haha, no, you don't. Mm. Usually you and can also pick them crazy. because they, they're they like vegans, uh, dietitians. They have to tell you. Uh, they actually put it in there to RD. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're an idiot then, mostly. There are some RDs who are not idiots, but they are the exception and not the rule I have found. Or, sorry, Ted has found on, on X. I don't know anything about X. Ted, that's Ted's department by the way. Um, and Ted actually finds it quite offensive that everyone assumes that on X, Ted is me. No, it's Ted. He, he's his own man. He's his own bear. Burr. Bear. Burr. Whatever it is. He does his own thing. I keep telling him he needs to change it. He, he uses that C word, JT. <laughs> he doesn't have a girlfriend to be offended, mind. So um, that that's how it is. Um, all right. Uh, did you Did you follow along that exchange I had with that vegan doctor that I decimated for a couple of hours in a pseudo debate situation. And then what he did is respond to that by turning around and making several hour long videos wherein he ignored absolutely every decimation that I laid at his doorstep as if I'd never said that and just repeated his message again as per the song sheet, as per the hymns of the Holy Church of Anorexia Vagana. And and his only real response to anything I said was that I'm a clever guy, but I don't really know much about nutrition. Oh, really? But didn't actually I did really... see that. Oh, What's, uh, which guy he's was a, this? Peter Rogers was this bloke. And he's, okay. also, he's also a bloke that you could take one look at and go, I'm not taking health advice from you, son. Sorry. Uh, I did see you offended uh, the esteemed Muhammad Allo. Did I? What a shame. Yeah. He made mm. a video about you making a video on him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did he have to say? And then, oh, he's like, how fragile do you have to be to make a video about me? He didn't name you, but of course everybody knew who you were. Yeah. How do you make a video about me speaking at a medical conference just because I have a different opinion? Well, no, that wasn't my problem. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Allo... Uh, he blocked me a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, he will not be attending that conference, as it turns out. I know. <laughs> yeah. Remember how he said, you know, this is ridiculous. He actually made a comment under my video uh, saying, this is ridiculous. I don't need your permission to speak. Apparently you do, Muhammad. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I... To be fair, to be fair, the fact that he's not no longer speaking at that conference has nothing to do with me or Ted, actually, for those that want to know. But nonetheless, he will not be speaking at that conference. Um, so that's a win. Yeah, that's mm. that was probably my first indoctrination into, man, just because you have a degree does not mean you are very intelligent. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I honestly, like, I've stopped doing stuff on him. I did a couple of videos back and people are like, well, why just do this, do that? I'm like, I could literally turn my whole page into a troll account. Like at some point, it's just, it's such low hanging fruit that I feel unintelligent going after him. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to at least try to <laughs> try to move on.
Fair play, fair play. <laughs> All right, very, very good. Um, good fun. Awesome bit of uh, cross-pollination there. I, I do hope that all my meat militia soldiers do go forthwith immediately and follow you on your social media. Don't forget to follow Ted on, on Twitter as well. X, I should say. Um, at HRH underscore Ted. And, of course, JT Carnivore will be at Carnivore JT. Is what that would be. Yes, sir. Follow, follow that. Follow that little train of things. Follow all the social medias. Follow the YouTubes. All of that kind of stuff. It's all about the the cross pollination. Um, JT, you're the guest, so you get to finish us off with closing thoughts and stuff. Uh, oh yeah, uh, everybody can uh, follow along. Depend on when this air will be dependent on where I'm at in my journey. Uh, but I am on a overeating. Can I get fat on carnivore? Uh, little experiment. Oh, yes. Thank you. I which, forgot about that. Tell us. Yes. Yeah. So I realized like weight loss is scientific, right? So if it's scientific and if it's a mathematical equation and mm. it adheres to the laws of physics, then yep. what's true of weight loss must mm. also be true of weight gain. Yes. It has to go both ways. Mm. So I was like, well, it's a lot easier to lose weight. Like I, I can honestly lose weight. Like I can do all sorts of stuff. Mm. I was like, well, let's take a look at gaining weight because that's, a will give us some insight into how people get fat in the first place, right? Mm. So I was like, okay, I'm not, I know I can get fat. Like, that's not an issue. I was like, but can I do it while I'm eating carnivore? And so I I went in, I was like, I'm gonna pretend I am a an average person who is trying to lose weight. And whether they go to a coach or whether they look online, they're gonna get the same information. Go to a total daily energy expenditure calculator, mm -hmm. figure out how many calories you burn. Mm -hmm. Eat 500 less than that, you'll lose a pound a week. Smooth sailing. Yes, I know. Right? I know. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go to there. And it was 2,850. I was like, cool. I'm going to eat 4,000 a day. And I'm going to pick a nice round number that puts me at 10 plus pounds of weight gain. So I picked 35 days. Mm -hmm. Expected I'll gain 11 and a half pounds from eating mm -hmm. 4,000 calories from carnivore. Right. And it's, it's strict carnivore, like, the closest thing I've not had is like a sour cream dip, but it's literally sour cream and cheese. Mm -hmm. And so like, all right, I'm going to see if I can do it. And I am, this is day 11. Uh, I'm currently down three pounds. Will I Gosh. keep that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Will I gain some weight? Maybe. But I think it really illustrates, especially if you, if you follow along with the videos, like I'm, I do not enjoy this at all. Mm -hmm. Like I am literally after day three, I thought I was going to have to cash in because I was going to throw up. I was like, I, I get to the end of the day and I, like I melted like seven tablespoons of butter and put it in a smoothie and drank it oh, last night just to hit my Jesus. calories. <laughs> like it's, yeah, it there. is so hard to eat this amount of food. Yeah. And so no matter, literally no matter what the results is, I don't care if I gain 10 pounds. I think there's a lot of insight and especially the calorie is a calorie because it's most certainly not because I could eat 4,000 calories of jelly donuts like it's going out of style and no problem. Yeah. So it's generating a little buzz. It's fun. It's, I've already had the, well, that's not science. I'm like, I don't care. It's literally a personal experience that I'm documenting online. Like, mm. yeah, chill out. I'm not submitting this for a paper. Science a is usually thing. litigated in the peer reviewed annals. It's not on YouTube videos or ticky tockies or X reels or whatever the fuck you call them. Good. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm doing, uh, you get to watch everything I eat. I hyperlapse everything that I eat. I weigh out everything meticulously. I save all the fat that's rendered. And uh, yeah, it's it's honestly been interesting for me. And even if it were to end right now, I think I'd have a lot of insight that people could benefit from. But yeah, so far, I have not gained the probably four and a half pounds that I should have. And in, in fact, you've lost about that much. Directly in the face of calories in, calories out being a thing. I had a similar experience myself on between four and four and a half thousand calories a day for 14 days solid uh, a while back. From memory, it was 15 pounds of weight loss on a scale during that period. Now, I'm 168 centimeters or five foot six. And under 150 pounds. And I ate that much percentage. food. 
Right. So yeah. I ate that much food for two weeks solid and lost 15 pounds. Please explain that, the, the calories in, calories out, folks. How does that work? Other than it fucking doesn't. No? Anyway. Oh, calories in, calories out. <laughs> oh, it's great stuff, isn't it? Yeah. But it's, it's all about it's all about Lame Norton having the facts at his fingertips, apparently. And the rest of us are just doing mental gymnastics, of course. All right. Uh, join me next time when probably someone will be wrong on the interwebs. Go and join Carnivore JT right now over on all his social medias. And chime in to the discussions that he and Ted are involved in with others like Lame Norton and not Dr. Gregor and others. Let your voices be heard. Um, see you over there. Ciao for now. <laughs>